We were told this year's AFL trade period would be the biggest ever and it is living up to the hype. Five deals going down today and there's seven or eight that could happen before tomorrow night's deadline. So it's all happening. Let's quickly go through what went through today. And the biggest deal, Brody Grundy, Collingwood superstar Ruckman, two-time All-Australian, now at Melbourne, traded for pick 27. So that just looks like a massive uh, win for the Ds on uh, face value. I guess Collingwood clears a heap of salary cap room. That's what they wanted out of this, but... Um, you know, we're gonna, just going to have to wait and see how it works having Max Gorn and Brodie Grundy playing in the same team together and how Melbourne is going to juggle that. There's no one uh, guaranteed way to win a premiership and maybe a way to win one is to have the two best rucks of the past five years in the same team. So can't wait to see how that plays out. Could you pick eyes with them in KFC Supercoach now? It's going to be really hard when they're competing against each other. So hearing maybe Grundy will do more of the ruck work. We'll keep an eye on that. He will be a good price, but just an absolutely massive deal. Grundy, now a demon. Another huge deal today was Jack Bowes getting to Geelong. Now, it was a, you know, quite a bizarre move, really, when you think that Jack Bowes on his own is a pretty good get. Former pick 10 in the draft. Um, a Cairns product, Gold Coast Academy kid who apparently loved the Suns, didn't want to leave, but they told him, we need to fix our salary cap, so we're going to trade you, and Geelong won the bidding war there. So they get Bowes and pick seven in the draft, incredibly, and all they had to give back was a future third round pick. So incredible win by the Cats, who, if we uh, have forgotten, it's only been a couple of weeks, they won the premiership, so um, they're going to be hard to beat again next year. Whether Bowes is in the first team, that'll be really, really interesting to see, but they want to keep pick seven in the draft, so they effectively get two top ten picks out of this deal and don't have to give a whole lot back except having to pay Bose salary. So Geelong fans will be absolutely wrapped with that. Bose has put up some decent uh, KFC Supercoach numbers in the past, so it could be a sneaky one there as well. The other move that's just gone through in the last half hour or so is Jacob Hopper getting to Richmond. So the Tigers now have Tim Taranto and Jacob Hopper, two absolute gun GWS or ex-GWS midfielders to throw straight into the centre square for round one next year. Totally transform the look of that team, which clearances haven't been a strong point under uh, Damien Hardwick, really, in the whole Richmond sort of premiership era. But uh, I think it has bitten them in the last couple of years, especially with the 6-6-6 rule. It's harder to defend if you lose those centre clearances. So they needed to bolster that, and they've done that. They've had to pay up for it, obviously gave picks 12 and 19 to the Giants for Taranto, and today they paid pick 31 and a future first for Hopper. They did get a couple of late picks back, 53 and 63, and there was talk that Ivan Solde might have to go as part of the deal, but that didn't happen, so he's still at Richmond, has some ruck insurance, which uh, I think they were happy with. Um, I think Hopper is definitely someone I'll be looking at, in fact, Taranto too, for that matter, in KFC Supercoach next year. He's likely to be priced around the 320k mark Hopper after he only played seven games this year with some injuries. So if he can bounce back, he's been in the All-Australian squad before, could be huge for Richmond and for Supercoach. And rounding out the deals on Tuesday, the first one that went through was Jack Gunston going to Brisbane, just uh, following in the uh, footpath now. It's a bit of a footy factory um, that uh, they produce. Hawthorne plays, gets these great players. They play multiple premierships, and then in the last couple of years, they go and play for Brisbane and have a great time up there. So obviously Hodge did it, and uh, Grant Birchall as well, and now Jack Gunston. And Hawthorne gave a pick 48 and a future fourth as well to get that done. So that'll make Brisbane a lot better uh, going into next year, and we'll see what happens with the Hawks. Um, you know, we've been talking about it for a few years, and this year it's finally happening that they are trading a lot of these uh, experienced veterans, and it's all going to be banked on youth and uh, draft picks for Sam Mitchell's team. So that'll be another great uh, watch for next year. And Billy Frampton was the other player who moved today, future third, gets him from Adelaide to Collingwood. I mean, I think just a depth player. He wasn't in Adelaide's best 22 at the end of the year, but gives Collingwood some more depth at both ends of the ground. He's played forward and in key defence. So um, a handy addition for the Pies, maybe, but uh, yeah, they didn't have to give up the world for him. So that was it for today, but still plenty of deals that we think will or might go through before tomorrow night's deadline. Josh Dunkley's the massive one. Requested a trade to Essen a couple of years ago and it fell over. Will the same thing happen here again? He says he won't go back to the dogs this time. So, yeah, that one's really uh, a close watch to see if they can figure out a way through the impasse there. Those two teams don't seem to be getting along. So they've got another day to figure it out. Ollie Henry wants to get down to Geelong from Collingwood. Collingwood don't want to trade him. They've rejected Geelong's most recent offer there. So we'll see what happens. Tom Mitchell, uh, Collingwood say they're definitely interested. Could he get from Hawthorne to the Pies? Um, Isaba Radigalia uh, wants to get to Port Adelaide and he, that pick maybe could help get Henry. So that's something that could, uh, play out tomorrow. Aaron Francis, we think, will get from Essendon to Sydney. Jago O'Meara, suddenly there's two clubs chasing him. Rory Lobb still wants to leave Fremantle and get to the Bulldogs, and Lloyd Meek has requested a trade as well, but uh, the Dockers aren't really playing ball, so plenty to play out. Subscribe. We'll be watching every move tomorrow as it happens, counting down to the 2022 AFL trade deadline.